I know it's videos like these that make people think I'm a hater. <laughs> That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda. You're watching Soul Entertainment. And today we are talking about Squarey. This is probably backwards. We're talking about Squarey. And the reason I joke that I'm a hater is because I don't think this is innovative. I think this is depressing as hell. <laughs> I think this takes all of the joy out of food entirely. When I first heard about this a couple of months ago, I heard about it on Twitter and they were not for sale yet. Square Eat was just kind of promoting things and talking about how innovative they were and their goals and what they were all about. And everyone was like, uh, do you want to kiss over the uh, square foods, the depressing square vegetables? I, I knew I had to get on the waiting list. So I applied for the waiting list and then they opened for sale and they were only being sold in Miami. And then like a week later, I'm assuming they didn't get enough sales or they got plenty of sales and they were like, oh, this will cover the cost of everything else. So they opened it up for, uh, the US, oh my God, words. I keep getting distracted by the viewfinder because this chunk of hair will not lay flat and it has been driving me insane. Um, it's just bedhead, tried fixing it, it's not working out. So I've done the best that I can. Feel free to comment on it and boost me in the algorithm. So Squarey, they opened it up to the US. I ordered it, totally forgot about it. And then it came yesterday. Luckily it got delivered to my door and not to the mailboxes because I would have assumed it was Hermes's harness and I probably wouldn't have gotten it till like today. And I was able to try some of the squares last night. But before we get into the squares, let me, talk to you a little bit about what's on the Square Eat website. So Square Eat's goals, according to Square Eat, is our goal is to make people's lives easier without sacrificing taste. Like most innovative products, it is a problem that feeds the inspiration. As a semi-professional athlete, I've struggled my whole life trying to keep up with a proper and balanced diet. It didn't take me long to understand that I couldn't deal with all the prepping, cooking, and cleaning every day. I thought there must be a way to have healthy, tasty, long lasting and ready to eat food, but how? In order to achieve the results I wanted, I had to reinvent the whole food concept. Paolo Cadigiani, Square Eat CEO. Okay. Could you have reinvented it in a way that wasn't depressing as hell? I, I'm gonna be honest. I tried this last night. I tried the sea bass and the zucchini from the Mediterranean box. I got the lifestyle package so I could try a couple different things for you guys. And that comes with uh, two of each. So the classic, the fisherman, the Mediterranean, the plant BBQ and the sweet break, which was basically chocolate pancakes. And I had one of those last night too. And I will say this filled me with such a foreboding sense of anxiety and sadness. Like eating this, I was not like, wow, this is what innovation is. This is what capitalism breeds. No, I was like, oh my God, we're gonna get to a point where we're being rationed to the government because the the the, the economy has collapsed because the climate has collapsed and every, food is just scarce. So we're each given a little square of rations twice a week. <laughs> Like that's, that's what this felt like. It didn't feel like, wow, I have so much energy. And honestly, I don't fully understand the portion size of these things. I don't know if I'm supposed to eat a full box in one go or if I'm supposed to do portions of it. I had like three squares last night. <laughs> I hate talking like this. It sounds insane. Oh God, this sounds like a depressing dystopian sci-fi. Uh, I'm such a hater. Some of them be like, this is such an innovative idea. This is depressing. You can disagree with me all you want. I will be talking about the flavors and all of that, but overall this concept is depressing to me. I, I'm not a fan. It stresses me out and it, it just it doesn't do good things for me. Uh, why square? The squared shape is the result of the cooking process needed to achieve our goal. Our meals are portion controlled, already seasoned. I disagree with what I ate last night, but we'll talk. Portable, long lasting and tasty. Versatility at its finest. In our kitchen, we take advantage of thermal shocking, low temperature cooking and vacuum sealing to deliver superior quality meals at an affordable price. I know someone's gonna be like, Amanda, why aren't you doing this video in your kitchen? Uh, that's where you usually do cooking videos. I'm gonna be honest with you. If I tried to make this into like a traditional cooking video, the way that you guys like to see me do, cause you guys like seeing like housewife Amanda, um, that would actually destroy me emotionally. Like it would be a pro, like this stresses me out in a way that I don't fully know how to, like I'm gonna have to talk about this in therapy. I don't know why this is making me so anxious, but it is. And I think trying to give this like, like 
I'm actually cooking something. It's gonna drive me insane. I just microwave the ones, they give you a bunch of different cooking options. The one I ate last night, I just microwave. But if I actually pull out like my pan and try and cook these on the stove, I will go insane. So we're gonna not do that. This gotta tell me invoice here, $145 or one, two, three, four, eight meals and two packs of chocolate pancakes. I mean, that could be worse cost-wise. But still, okay, this was my other question because they're talking about the environment and how their stuff is good, better than the environment, but everything comes uh, vacuum sealed in plastic baggies, which I will show you. They're saying that that's all uh, recyclable bags and they're free of BPA and their boxes are biodegradable or compostable. Sorry, not biodegradable, difference. Meet the team. We have Paolo, like I said, business development and sales, Alessandro, finance and accounting, Stefano, tech and visual area, Vincenzo, operations and source. Maria Laura, marketing and communication. Maybe have like a nutritionist on site, a chef, a culinary expert. That's just my suggestion. Maybe get Gordon Ramsay on there, but I think that, I think if he, has anyone shown this to Gordon Ramsay? I think there is a lot of joy in food. I am absolutely a foodie. I love eating. I love trying different foods. I mean, I also agree that there is a lot of benefits to the thinking that food is fuel and that's it. You know, like it's what you can do to live your life. And that's another way to have a healthier view of food. Like it's the fuel you need to go and be healthy and live your life. But I also think there's a way to have it be fuel and also not depressing. <laughs> I'm sorry, they, they have these photos of like the aesthetic square and it's stressing me out. Oh, okay. So even these photos are like, this looks like something like a, a Minecraft texture pack. Like this, that's what this looks like. I can't look at something in this apartment without Hermes being like, is that mine? So me trying to try out some of these flavors last night. Hermes obviously was like, hi, I'm sitting. I get treat now. But I didn't give him any because even though they're all claiming that, oh, it's just the one ingredient or whatever, I don't trust it. I don't know what's in these. I don't know what I want to give to him. I'm like, my own health is one thing. I'm not risking my dog's health. He's much smaller than me. I have some buffer room if I ingest some poison. He's like 15 pounds, okay? Not no. <laughs> so yeah, I had the sea bass square, which is 45 grams of sea bass, prime quality fish. And I had the zucchini square, 45 grams of sea zucchini square. So everything is 45 grams. That's the square size. Oh, that's right, we had the vegan burger square. There's a hazelnut square, choco pancake square. Square, a delicious pancake with a hint of cocoa. That was maybe one of the blandest things I've ever eaten. And I used to try like the really bad Girl Scout cookies when I was a Girl Scout. Like they, you know, the Girl Scout cookies they would only bring for like one year and then never bring back. Yeah, those, um, I would have to know my product so I could sell it to people. So I'd try all of them. This was maybe one of the blandest chocolate tasting things. Like it's, you know, like how some people joke that LaCroix is like sparkling water. And then if like down the hallway, someone screams the name of a, like a fruit. And then that's like the only taste you get of the fruit. It's kind of like, like that with chocolate. They came with some maple syrup. I just used my own maple syrup on top of it, rolling the Canadian jokes. It, it was the only way for me to make it like edible was like dousing it in maple syrup. So those are the three that I ate last night. And the thing that's getting me is the portion sizes. So like I said, I already ate the Mediterranean last night. So that's not here. So I have four of the flavors and then the box of sweet break that I already opened. 270, do I have to do math? Is that what you're telling me? They come with these. QR codes, and I tried scanning them last night. This is the Fisherman box. And then we've got the Plant BBQ and the Classic. What throws me off is that obviously there's six squares on this thing. And I'm assuming, am I eating this whole box? Cause I'm assuming I'm not supposed to eat the whole box of chocolate pancakes. I'm assuming I'm not, am I just supposed to eat? <laughs> I'm gonna make a full meal out of these and we're gonna sit there and eat this and it's gonna drive me nuts. Oh, also something that I thought was funny and it was last night. On the back, it says net content for six or eight squares made or described on the front label, 60 gram squares. And they took a Sharpie and crossed it out. Can you see that little black spot? That's Sharpie where they crossed out 60 grams. And I'm wondering if that's because on here it says 45 grams. So I don't know if that was a misprint or there's actually a different quality on here, but that's interesting that they're all planted like that. But inside here, this is a classic. This is chicken, broccoli and spinach and basmati rice. This is so depressing. Oh, it comes with vegan barbecue sauce. See, this doesn't tell me serving size because in here I've got one, two, three chicken, one broccoli and spinach and two basmati rice. And no, it doesn't look like rice. It looks like pureed baby food. Am I supposed to just eat this whole thing? 
I'm assuming yes, right? Am I gonna make this whole plate and just one thing of broccoli and spinach? That doesn't seem like enough. I love you, cannot have any, I know. So I guess I'm gonna make this whole thing. So like I said on here, there's a bunch of different cooking recipes. So apparently the bags themselves are microwavable resistant. I just stuck these on like a little baby plate last night and ate them that way for like 30 seconds in the microwave because it says 30 seconds microwave, fast and soft. Pan, four minutes, sauteed and crispy. I love you. You need to stop whining because I'm not giving you any. You're my favorite, but no, five minutes boiled, tender and delicate, oven baked and crusty, on the go, fresh, ready to eat. Technically you can eat these right out of the bag. I'm not doing that. I don't want to. It stressed me out. I will say the sea bass last night, I expected the consistency to be way worse. It actually kind of cooked really well in the microwave, just heating it up. But the consistency is much more like, I don't wanna say shredded chicken, like shredded tuna, cooked tuna maybe. It's like that. I know it's sea bass and that's different, but I'm just trying to explain the consistency. Like shredded chicken potentially. Honestly, I probably could have taken a fork and like shredded it and stuck it on a piece of toast or something. I don't know. I didn't do that. And also I had to cover it in like salt and pepper to make it edible because there was no flavor in it. But the consistency was not terrible. So I guess I'm just gonna put all of these on a thing. By the way, as far as long lasting, this just says to recommended consumption by January of 2022. It's not even a month away now, like January 20th, 2022, or no, January, 2022. So yeah, it's not even like a month from now. So I think what I'm just gonna do is pause this, put these all on a plate, cut them all open and stick them in the microwave and see where that puts us. And I'll be back. I'm back. Um, Here's my lunch. Stuck these in the microwave. And I think because there's more here, um, they didn't cook through on the first time. So I flipped them and did another 30 seconds. But we've got the basmati rice, the broccoli and asparagus, I think, and then my chicken. It smells like food cooked in the microwave, but it's also not right in front of me. Does that make sense? Like it smells like I cooked this like a week ago and then left it in the fridge, but it didn't go bad. Like, I, I don't know, I'm trying to think of the wording. Like I cooked it a little while ago and then I opened up the microwave and I still smell it in the microwave. That's what this smells like. It doesn't smell like it's right in front of me. I also have salt and pepper on deck if necessary. So I guess I'm just gonna go for it. Let's try the rice. Cause that's the thing that's throwing me off the most. Zero flavor, zero, nothing at all. I mean, it tastes like rice that's not been seasoned, like a rice patty, maybe a rice, no, like a rice cake. It's not bad, there's just no flavor to it. Okay, let's try asparagus and broccoli. I will say, because obviously this is a startup, this is still a fairly new company. They have just launched nationwide. Uh, my suggestion to you is get smaller boxes because the boxes you have are very thin. And I get it, you wanna make them compostable, but they're way too large. You don't need them that large for what you have in there. And also they're very flimsy. Uh, in the same, they were not holding their shape in just the delivery package you guys sent them to me in. So my suggestion would be to shrink the boxes, even just a little bit, you'd keep the food closer together, probably better storage wise, cause they just, they're not stackable very well. And so something like that's like a meal plan, making them stackable is ideal. So. I tried to distract myself. Did you see that? I mean, it, it tastes, it tastes like it. I will say that that's what it tastes like. It tastes like broccoli and asparagus, but like just the mushy, I feel like I'm eating hard baby food. Like that's what I feel like I'm eating. Okay, let's eat the chicken. I, the reason I'm not seasoning anything yet is because I don't want it to like mess up my mouth. Okay, the chicken's a little harder to get into. Is this gonna be dry as hell? Okay, chicken. A little dry, but again, I stuck it in a microwave. More or less the same consistency. It's not bad, it tastes like chicken. But again, there's no flavor in this. And I don't know if it's the cooking method. The thing is, is I can see that there's seasoning inside the patties, but I don't know if it's the cooking method, the packaging method or what, that makes it so that the seasoning is basically non-existent. I'm just gonna go for it. Should I just go for, it? this is the rice. <laughs> I 
I love you, but I don't know what's fully in this. So I can't give, they're not giving me a comprehensive list of like the seasonings. So I don't know what I can give you. It doesn't taste bad. It just tastes like nothing. Like it tastes like the illusion of rice. And I'd rather just have a bowl of freaking rice. See, the problem I had last night was that even after three squares, I was pretty full. I wasn't happy about it, but I was full. And so that's the thing that I don't like about this. Like I'd like to earn being full, you know? It's like you're getting the worst part of the vegetable. I'm sorry, that's just what it tastes like. Like asparagus, I think there's ways to cook it that it tastes amazing. I like asparagus normally. You can wrap it in bacon, you can season the shit out of it. You can saute it in some oil, make it nice and good. He's fine, he's just in his little crate and he's mad at me that I won't let him eat any. Same with broccoli, I think there's plenty of ways to cook it and make it good. This just like, I feel like you're getting the worst parts of the flavor. It's weirdly dry at certain spots. Like chicken nuggets from McDonald's taste better than this. Like that's what we're working with. I'm just using salt and pepper because I don't want to mess with the flavor too much because I want to be, you know, respectful of the squarey. So I'm assuming this is meant to be a full meal of disappointment. So here's a bite of all three, I hate this. Wow. Somehow it still tastes like nothing. The consistencies were all different because one was, you know, drier, one was holding its shape, but still had some give. And then the, uh, the asparagus broccoli is mushy as hell. See, of all of these, I prefer the rice, but again, that's just because it's kind of like rice paper or rice cake or whatever. The vague flavor where it's like, even that, you know, I would put something else with it, like kimchi or something, you know? It's not bad. It just doesn't taste like enough. Like there's not enough flavor for this to be a suitable meal, let alone worth my while. And I don't even know if there's enough nutritional value in this meal for me to be like, oh yes, I can go to the gym now. It doesn't really feel like it. They have the vegan barbecue sauce, which I don't know why they send me vegan barbecue sauce when it's literally chicken. Sorry, the consistency at which that sprung out of the container just grossed me out. But yeah, it's like last night when I put the maple syrup on the pancake, like it's like, that's what I'm tasting. I'm not tasting the actual item itself. This will fill up my stomach, but I'm not happy about it. It's like when you have like a, a meal you're really looking forward to, you get it and it's terrible, but you already paid for it. And you were like, oh, maybe, you know what, it'll fill. You eat it all. And then you're still hungry, but you're full. You know, that's what this feels like. Okay. I was gonna do the plant barbecue for you, but these stress me out. Um, this is the vegan burger. Looks very sad. Honestly, I don't trust it. I trust it way less than I did the literal meat. The quinoa looks sad. They pureed quinoa. That doesn't seem like it should be necessary. Uh, and then the asparagus also, it's very separated and kind of stressing me out a little bit. And I already didn't like the asparagus broccoli that I just had, so I'm not gonna do that one. Sorry, the vegan burger is not happening. See, the thing that's flooring me about this is I do think that to some degree, there is a need for something like this. There are plenty of people who have... One moment. Ignoring the athlete side of things, there is a lot of people who have food sensitivity for a variety of reasons, okay? Whether they have disordered eating patterns, um, they have other issues that make food kind of difficult for consistency and things like that. Something like this could be good because maybe, you know, they don't want to deal with a crunch or too much texture. So something that's kind of soft like this would be good for them to get proper nutrients. But I feel like there's a better way to market it in a way that's not so depressing. The thing that always floors me is that there's always an invention or some new product of some form that is literally designed for a variety of different reasons. And people are always like, oh my God, that's so lazy. You can't tie your shoelaces. And it's designed with people in mind who have lack of mobility or, you know, they don't have the ability to tie their own shoelaces and it's a way for them to, you know, like that's what I'm talking about is like things for people that are differently able. And so to some degree, I can see the value in this, in those situations where again, issues with different textures, um, maybe something like they have difficulty using forks and knives. And so something that they can just eat like a patty and still get the nutrition is good. I do think there's a way to do this without sacrificing flavor. Clearly there's some type of seasoning inside what you sent me. I just think that there's not enough or something in the cooking process is like neutralizing whatever flavor that that seasoning provides because they're, it's so bland. And I think that functionality does not need to prioritize over taste or flavor. I think there's something here that can be worked with but this does stress me out. It's the anticipatory stress. Cause I'm sure down the line, 
this will be the norm at some point. And I don't personally like that. Maybe you tried this, maybe you like this, or maybe you're thinking, oh my gosh, my child who has a lot of food sensitivities loves this type of food that's like this. So this is a good way for them to eat something like this, you know, and you can, you know, give them chicken and cover it in chocolate sauce so they don't realize that it's chicken because I'm fairly certain that would work with these. They're that bland. Whatever flavor is over it is probably gonna work. You could probably bake these into like a sandwich, shred them up, cover them in cheese or something. I think there's something here that's potentially a leaping off point. I do think there's something here that's not, you know, maybe not be super cool, but you know, it's something that could be useful and helpful. You say that you have, you know, cooks and nutritionists on site. I cannot find them on your website. I think a little more accreditation is important. Um, so I know what I'm eating. I don't wanna knock a startup, but I also think that sometimes startups need to be taken down a peg <laughs> so they can reevaluate. You know, I, I think a little perspective is necessary. And so I think that, again, I think there's something here that's not for the intended use, I guess. I, I think there's that. Maybe it's not for athletes. Maybe it's for, you know, people who have difficulty eating and they still need the nutrition, you know? Maybe this is the new version of a power bar, you know, or a protein shake, you know? But even then, protein shakes and power bars, say what you will about them, a lot of them taste really good, you know? And they get a lot of nutrition and protein and all of that into those little squares or there's those little bottles. So I, I think there is a way to do this. I think you need to kind of relook and reevaluate your recipes. So I know I started, I was like, I'm a hater. And now I'm like, let's fix this. Let's workshop this, but I am serious, you know? Overall, am I going to be making the, the complete shift to Squarey? No, I am a foodie. I love eating. I love trying new foods and flavors and all of that. And this does not provide me with that. But I also acknowledge that there are other people on this planet who have different views of food than I do, okay? And maybe flavor is not important to them because they have a lot of issues with eating and something like this that'll give them the nutrition they need without, you know, upsetting any of those sensitivities. Great. Square eight, come on. I think there's a way we can workshop this. I think we can fix this, but mainly seriously, you really need to fix your boxes because they're they're super flimsy. If, you, if you're trying to do a meal kit like this, something stackable for the fridge or the freezer is ideal. And I just think if you literally just cut out like an inch, if you literally cut out like maybe even an inch or two, like two inches, you'd have way more durability. You wouldn't have to make these any thicker. You know, it's just the width of the box, I think. Cause you know, this bit back here, very flimsy as well. I think if you just shorten it a little bit and make things better, there's a way to do this. And it's just not the current route that you're in. No, but seriously, you really need to be more clear about who your nutritionists and chefs are because I just think that there's a little little lack in there. And that's really gonna be it. Have you tried Squarey? Have you heard about Squarey? Have you heard Hermes making noise the entirety of this video? Is this something you would try? Is this something that fills you with dread? Or do you think this is an innovative thing that could help people with food sensitivities and or people who eating is more of a stressful thing than anything? How about that? Let me know, comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, the Swell Shenanigans podcast. I took two weeks off during the holidays for the podcast uh, to give myself a break. And because guests were obviously traveling and stuff, so it was gonna be an issue. Reminder, I have merch like that mug back there. Shout out to my Patreon. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd like to support me on Patreon as well, love list down below. If you'd like to follow me on my social media, that'll be all up here and that's going to be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. I really am a special type of annoying. I'm going to be a hater. <laughs> and then by the end of the video, let's fix this. <laughs> Thank you, Alan, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, Destiny, Devin, Dirty One, Dolan, Elliot, Evan, Beckles, Hopeless, Hollow, Jucker, Ray, Joe, John, M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lauren, Lamb, Lex, Lisa, Luis, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew, F, Team Lord, The Red, Michael, Michael, J, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Rob, Robert, Ross, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tosh, Timothy, Tom, Wendy, Williams, Henry.